Okay, so we're now going to continue to review for the Unit 2 lecture exam. And so we've talked about igneous rocks, we've talked about sedimentary rocks, and so now it's time to talk about metamorphic rocks. So this is going to be Lesson 7, Metamorphosism, a Process of Change. So this is going to correspond to Chapter 7 out of your textbook. So what is a metamorphic rock? Got to know the definition of a metamorphic rock for the exam. So it's going to be a rock that forms from a pre-existing rock. So that counts out igneous rocks. Remember that an igneous rock formed from a melt, from a liquid. So this forms from a pre-existing rock. It also counts out sedimentary rocks because a sedimentary rock came from sediments, which came from another rock. Okay, it, uh, a metamorphic rock has a solid state. Uh, this means that it does not melt, because if it did melt, it would be an igneous rock. So you have to have a pre-existing rock, which is called a protolith, and then you're going to subject it to some kind of change that's going to change the minerals that make up that rock or it's going to change its texture. So what, how can you change it? You can change it by applying heat to it, by applying stress to it, or you can uh, uh, push on it or pull on it, so that's differential stress. Uh, you can also uh, have hot fluids moving through the rock and that can alter it. So those are the different ways of metamorphosizing a rock. So we mentioned here stress. So what is a stress? A stress is defined to be a force divided by an area. So a force was a push or a pull. When we apply that force to an area, we're applying a stress to that particular thing. And so far, we have talked about pressure, which is a uniform stress. So if you were to take a balloon and you hold it underwater, then the water is pushing in this direction, and then this direction, and then this direction, and then this direction, and it's approximately the same amount of force being applied to it. And so that would be a uniform stress that is being applied to an object. So this is going to be what's going to happen when you take a rock and you bury it underground. Okay, but then you could also have a situation in which the forces are not uniform. So you could have a situation in which you've got an object and it's being pulled apart. So then that's going to be a tensional stress. You could also have a situation in which you've got a rock that's being pushed on both sides. So then that's going to be called compression. And then you could have a situation in which you've got a rock and it's being pushed, but it's being pushed unevenly. So that it's being pushed this way on this side and it's being pushed this way on this side. And then that is going to be called a shear stress. So these are all different kinds of stresses that can metamorphosize a rock. So how can rocks be metamorphosized? So the first method is going to be called recrystallization that changes the shape and the size of the grains without changing the mineral identity. So that means you start with a rock that has a certain kind of mineral and you end with a metamorphosized rock that is composed of exactly the same materials. So all it did was it either changed the shape of the particles, so maybe they were originally uh, circular, and then afterwards they're oblong. So it could change the shape or it could change the size. So you could start with something that's this big and you can end up with something that's that big. So either method is going to be called recrystallization. This is going to be caused by heat. 
Okay, then you could also have a phase change. So in a phase change, it transforms one mineral into another uh, mineral without changing the mineral identity. So it's, again, you start with a rock that has a certain mineral, you're gonna end with a, a metamorphosized rock that has the same minerals in them. The difference is the mineral changes its atomic uh, structure. So a, a really good example of this uh, would be um, uh, carbon that is in uh, graphite, and then when you subject it to pressures, it changes to carbon that's in the form of a diamond. It's still gonna be made of carbon, so it's still the same material, but it has a different atomic structure. And so this is gonna be caused by pressure. Okay, then you've got remobilization. This is a chemical reactions cause minerals to dissolve or partially melt and then reform the same mineral elsewhere. So if you look at the picture on the uh, left-hand side, you see your starting material, the protolith, and now it's gonna be subjected to heat and pressure and it's going to cause some of those minerals to dissolve and then they go somewhere else and then they reform. So what you could end up with is bands. So you'll notice in that picture there, you got one mineral and then underneath it is another mineral that was in the original rock, it's just it moved somewhere else. And then you got another band composed of a mineral and then underneath it is another band composed of a different mineral. Now let's compare remobilization to a metamorphic reaction neocrystallization. So I'm sorry, you got to know that word for the exam, neocrystallization. So this time a chemical reaction replaces minerals with different minerals. So in this one, it dissolved the mineral, it went somewhere else, and then reformed that mineral. Here it dissolves the mineral and then something else reappears. So that's going to be a metamorphic reaction, also known as neocrystallization. Okay, then you've got pressure solution. So this is what happens when water separates minerals. So when the two minerals are pressed together because of pressure, uh, they may have a chemical reaction at the point of contact between them, and then that causes ions to move around and then that can recreate another mineral somewhere else. And then you can also have a situation in which you, the, the minerals, they only change shape uh, without breaking. So you might start off with spherical minerals and then you end up with minerals that are oblong. So let's take a break and when we come back we'll talk about how metamorphic rocks are classified.